Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial series on electrostatics. This is video number three, and I'm going to discuss the electric field of a wire. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstories.com, and if you'd like to get any news updates, find out what I'm doing, and so on, you can follow me on Twitter at adambt503. So the pre previous video, which is relevant to this, are as follows. Number one, I discussed Coulomb's law, and in number two, I discussed the electric field. So I'm actually going to be using the talking about the electric field clearly in this particular video. All right, so let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is, is um, we're going to note that we're not not using Gauss's law. Not using Gauss's law. That's why this is going to be diff difficult. Now I haven't discussed it in this particular tutorial series yet, but I'm, I'd be shocked if you don't know what Gauss's law is. So what I'm going to do is set up my particular. Um, I'm going to set up my particular situation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place a wire, which is my in, in red at the moment, on the x-axis, and that's. I'm just going to happen to place it there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my detector on the z-axis. It could be on the y-axis. It could be anywhere. But I'm placing it perpendicular, we we'll say, to the wire, um, or in an axis perpendicular to the wire. Okay. So this is the z-axis, and that's where my detector is. All right, and what I'm going to try and do is uh, what I'm going to do. Excuse me, is give the charge on the, the the wire a continuous distribution. So the total charge, capital Q, is going to be the integral of lambda dl prime, or we'll say, um, we'll, yeah, lambda dl prime. Okay, or you could say that dQ is equal to lambda dl prime. Now, by the way, just to point out, so we're not getting confused, even though like, notation is a strange thing, you can, you're often swapping different variables. But in this case, we're talking about sources. And we're using capital Q as the total charge on, of, due to all the sources, rather than as a test charge itself. So the next thing I'm going to do is, and you'll see why in a moment, but bear with me as it stands, I'm going to split the wire up symmetrically. In this case, uh, to plus L, plus capital L and minus capital L. And that's, we'll say, where it's it's between plus L and minus L that I'm going to evaluate my electric field being evaluated here at, we'll say, where Z is at the moment, or point P. Well, let's call it point P on the Z axis. So what I can do is, of course, I can move L and minus L out to as far as I want to get the, the total field due to the wire. And it's going to be important now that I define theta in this position. Of course, you can get similar answers if you define the same same electric field, but it will look different mathematically if I define theta down here. But I'm defining theta up here. All right. So the next thing we need to notice is that the electric field has, you know, the electric field of course is a vector. So for that re this reason, it's going to be. We'll say we have. This is going to be the uh, the i hat unit vector direction, and this is the k hat unit vector direction. Because we have no, we're not talking about the, the y-axis at all. So that means, let's say if it's to the right of x is equal to zero, then I'm going to call it one part one or the electric field. This will be this is the you know this contributes to electric field number one. This contributes to electric field number two. So it's going to be electric field number one in the x-axis i hat. Next, we're going to have to add to that the electric field for uh, due to area number two on the x-axis in the i-hat direction. But notice, if we we'll say I'm defining this way as positive x, and anything that's contributed positively here would be contributed negatively over here. So for this reason, in actual fact, I'm going to have to, uh, it just due to the symmetry of the problem, add a negative sign there. And then we're going to have to add the field due to the first side and the, due to, on the z-axis and k-hat and the field to the second side on the z-axis, k hat. So the point here is that the electric field components along the x-axis cancel just because of the way I'm setting up this, the symmetry in the problem. And e sub z will say the z, the z component is going to be contributed by cos theta. Okay, because if you look at it here, the cosine term is the uh, is the vertical term as you look at it there. So we have a cos theta term. If we had both the I had the will say the x and y contributing would have a cos theta term, and we would also have a sine theta term. Okay, but as I said, we don't have that at the moment. So the next thing to note is because we don't have the electric field doesn't exist on the x 
in the x dimension or the i hat unit vector direction. That means it can only exist in the k hat unit vector direction. So that means the separation vector, the separation unit vector, is in the k hat unit vector direction. All right. So now you can see why we were after splitting it up uh, symmetrically, because with that symmetry, we were able to get this very neat result. So what I'm going to now look at is the infinitesimal electric field, but between x is equal to zero and x is equal to l. Okay, so this is, we'll say, from here to here. So the field due to the charge from here to here detected at point P. And of course, with my integral, I can put L wherever the hell I like, so I get, it, get the total length of the wire. So if we do that, well, the electric field is going to be 1 over 4 times pi times epsilon 0. Now, it's a continuous charge distribution along a line, so we have lambda dx prime. The reason I'm writing the prime is just to say that we're talking about source charges. Okay, next we have this cosine theta term to take into account that we only have a z component. And we have our unit vector, but we said the unit vector was in the, in the, in the z-axis. And finally we must divide by the separation vector squared, or squiggle squared. Now if you look at the symmetry of the problem, I'm just going to underline that. Or if you look at, do a small bit of trigonometry, you'll find that the separation vector squared is equal to L squared plus X squared. Or excuse me, that's incorrect. It's not Z squared plus X squared. All right, and that cosine of theta is equal to Z divided by the square root of Z squared plus X squared. So what I'm going to do is add both of those into my DE. So note, I'm just, this is DE going from X is equal to 0 to L, and it's going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 lambda DX prime times Z divided by um, divided by Z squared plus X squared to the 3 over 2. And just to remind you where the 3 over 2 came from, we have both the uh, separation vector squared, which is this, plus we also have the, uh, the square root term from the cosine theta. Okay, and finally we have our unit vector k hat. Now this is going from 0 to L, and because of the symmetry of the problem, it's very easy to go, we'll say, to from minus L to L. We just multiply by a factor of 2, and there, that is the total infinitesimal electric field. So in order to get the total electric field, we must integrate this with respect to dx, or dx prime, because it's source charge. Now, this is not an easy integral, and I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to give you the answer. I don't think the, the mathematics is actually very important in this particular case. So what we get is that the electric field is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. We have twice lambda times L. By the way, we're integrating from 0 to L here. That's very important. That's why we multiply it by 2. And we have Z outside of the square root of Z squared plus L squared. That is the electric field due to a wire. Okay, now just bear with me a moment. I'm just going to clean all this up. And this is, it was reasonably straightforward due to the symmetry, or the symmetry which we exploited or due to the exploitation of the symmetry. So we had one, I'm just going to call that k. One over four pi epsilon zero from now on, I'm going to call it k. That's, the, that's, a standard, that's a standard substitution that we make. And we have z square root of z squared plus l squared. Now, we're going to make two limits. We're going to look at two limits. The first limit is when, uh, when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about looking or detecting a good bit away from the wire. So we're going to talk about when z, the detection, is much, the detection distance is much greater than the length of the wire. And if you look at that, if you just plug it in, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So what we're going to get here, for example, is that looking at the bottom, we're going to have z, and we have the square root of z squared plus l squared. But z is much greater than l, so let's get rid of l. So then we have the z multiplied by the square root of z squared, which just becomes z squared. Okay. And then, if you just plug that in, we find the electric field, when we, we, when we observe a good bit away from the wire, or, or a large distance away from the wire in comparison with its length, is k times 2 
times L times lambda or 2 lambda L if you want to write it the way I had it a moment ago uh, divided by Z squared. Okay? Now what's interesting here is we'll say if I write it let's keep out the okay I'm gonna write it this way 2 lambda L okay now let's say for argument's sake I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the placeholder R instead of Z just because it doesn't really matter. So this is the generic. So look what we have here. We have the essentially the electric field of a point charge because we know that Q is the integral of lambda dl prime or it would be lambda l so that's the charge and then what we have here is this uh, we have this the, the distance away from our, our wire squared so it looks it looks like a point charge and like that should make sense so when you're observing a small wire a large distance away from the wire then it looks like a point charge and the uh, Conversely, if we look at where L is a hell of a lot greater than Z, well this time what happens is we have Z and we have the square root of Z squared plus L squared. Okay, so this time Z goes away, we get the square root of L squared which is L. Now that's on the bottom, but on the top you can ignore the Z I suppose just for the moment. And on the top then of course you're going to have an L. Okay, the two of those are growing in proportion, so they cancel. So what you're left with is this, this other term that was z here. So you're going to get the electric field is going to be k outside of uh, twice lambda divided by z. And this is the, the, that is the, uh, the electric field of an infinite wire. And generally you don't use the placeholder z, we just talk about s. So s is the, uh, is the, the distance from our wire. Okay, so that is the, uh, the electric field due to an infinite wire. And to be honest, that's a very important result, and we will be referring to it and using it frequently. Okay, so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.